This is Josh Friedman at LibertyCon 2017. I am at the Bitcoin section of the conference where I am joined by Martin of Liberty Bytes. Liberty Bytes is a Bitcoin ATM company. Martin, would you please introduce yourself and speak a little bit about your company? Yes, yeah, so correct. Well, it's General Bytes actually. Uh, we make uh, Bitcoin ATMs, uh, and it's the only thing we've been doing since 2013. So we make Bitcoin ATMs and point of sale terminals. So it's, I'm almost eating the cat, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so we make Bitcoin ATMs. Uh, generally, um, uh, we sell them to anywhere in the world. Most of our clients are currently in the US, but we're very popular in most European countries. Uh, we're already the number one ATM vendor right now. And we like to be here at this conference because this conference is all about liberty and freedom. And we feel, uh, General Bytes, we feel strongly that part of having total liberty and freedom is having economic freedom. And the freedom to, you know, is just to, to be, you know, to spend whoever you want to spend to. And Bitcoin is, is doing that. So uh, that's why we went into Bitcoin and it's been very successful up until now. Within the Bitcoin community right now, there's a little concern about transaction speed. Right. I'd like to get into some of the context behind that. And if you could explain to me some of the general issues relating to that and Bitcoin in general. Well, well, the way Bitcoin world works is that when uh, we would make a transaction between the two of us, say, for example, I would send you some Bitcoins, those Bitcoins will be, they will be, they will be floating in cyberspace, basically, basically in a mempool, Bitcoin mempool, until they're picked up by a miner. And when they're picked up by a miner, they add it onto the blockchain. And until they're added onto the blockchain, nothing is really certain. So to make a transaction, and you have to always wait for a confirmation. The problem here is that the Bitcoin network is designed to handle roughly 3.6, 3 3.7 uh, transactions a second. And at this moment, the network is so overloaded that at any time of the day, there will be tens of thousands of transactions just waiting to be processed. Uh, this is an issue that's been currently worked on by the uh, well, B Bitcoin developers. Uh, there are several several different routes we can travel to solve this problem, to increase the capacity of the Bitcoin network and to make it compete more like the likes of Visa uh, who handle thousands and thousands of simultaneous transactions. Um, one of these solutions pro, uh, is, is segregated witness or SegWit for short. It is uh, basically a system where we remove the signatures on the transaction from the transactions itself. And by separating this information, we don't no longer store that on the blockchain. So we create more space on the blockchain for more transactions. Well, at the same time, there's another in, uh, alternative implementation of Bitcoin called Bitcoin Unlimited. And they take a different approach. They want to increase the block size. Currently, the block, block size is limited to one or two megabytes. So there's a limited number of transactions that can be picked up in each block, every 10 minutes there is a block mined. So by increasing that block size, we'll be able to handle far more transactions in the future. Uh, unfortunately, there's no consensus yet over which approach will eventually win and will become the new Bitcoin. Uh, it's very, some of them feel very strongly politically motivated that one is bad, the other one is good. For me personally, I think the most important thing is just get those transactions through and just make sure it all runs smooth. For the end user, the consumer, uh, uh, there's nothing really important except that now and then they'll find that the transactions are either more expensive to send or they'll take a little longer to confirm. But as I said, this is being worked on by very, very bright minds in the industry at this moment. Do you have any prediction on how this is going to get resolved? Oh, well, if I could predict, I will, uh, will probably be very rich already. But I think eventually we'll see uh, a solution that combines both initi initiatives. The only reason that hasn't happened yet is because they strongly feel, feel very strongly about their own you know, uh, proposal. And we haven't been able to get everybody around the table and agree on, on a new implementation yet. But eventually, I think, this will probably, uh, you know, they both, the, both of the proposals have, have good initiatives in it. Basically, like uh, Bitcoin Unlimited does increase the block size. Yes, there are other problems, which, and the, 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 it hasn't been properly, properly documented. So there's, there's lots of criticism from both sides about the other solution. I think in the end, it's best for Bitcoin if we just, you know, 
just do it, increase that block size and make Bitcoin great again. So uh, that's just what we were currently working on. At General Bytes, we're neutral on this. We basically support anyone who creates any coin. If you would create your own coin, we'll be able to support it. So any token you create, any blockchain based currency, we'll always support it. So I think this is important. We're not here to take a political stand to take a political you know, uh, standpoint, we're here to help Bitcoin. So in the end, that's, that's there. We're here for everyone, basically. So, uh. What about time frame? Do you, do you have any notion as to when Bitcoin users will be able to go to the store, restaurants, ah. make their transaction, and everything will be sorted out instantly? Well, well, when will that take? Well, it, it's already the case, really. Where you can, uh, there's many, many places where you can spend your Bitcoin, and there is many more places where you can pay with uh, Cirrus or Maestro. And there's several companies now that make uh, uh, debit cards with have a, which have a QR code on the back and you just transfer some Bitcoins to it and five minutes later you'll be able to spend that at any store. So it, 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 will, give you, it will give you the ability to spend your Bitcoins anywhere. That's, 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 that's live now. At the same time, uh, uh, we concentrate on the cash transfer uh, part with, by having ATMs. Uh, we find that it's the only real way to provide anonymity to Bitcoin at this time, and uh, we find it's uh, very. We think it's very important. You mentioned making Bitcoin great again. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know if that was a reference to uh, the yes. president of the United States. Uh, he has these, these, these red hats with "Make America Great Again," and uh, friends of mine, especially Facebook friends of mine, they all went into this. Let's make Bitcoin great again. So they make the red caps and they made the same print and they just changed uh, America to to Bitcoin. But, but the thing is the same. You know, we just want. We just want Bitcoin to be become more accepted, and to do that, we'll have to increase in transaction uh, speed. We have to improve the, um, uh, the usability. It makes it easier to use. This is, I think, is an important part of making cryptocurrencies more accessible. Is that it's easy to use. It should be just like, just work. And um, yeah, well, that's uh, that's what we were doing with the ATMs right right now. What about governments? Can you speak at all to the influence of governments or lack thereof in the future of the Bitcoin industry? Yeah, what we see with governments is that since virtu uh, Bitcoin is quite virtual, it's not really tangible you know, like, like cash, um, we find that ATMs, they are very visible. So we, we do find that we're sometimes almost the face of Bitcoin in the consumer mind because this is the only place they can actually see the Bitcoin, because it's where the money comes in and the Bitcoins goes out. For them, there's the only, only real thing about Bitcoin. So in that respect, we find that we are uh, very much the first line of defense if there is any government problems of regulations. So we have to comply with whatever local laws, you know, our customers place their machines in. For example, we've got the fingerprint reader here. Uh, we, we don't recommend using it, but if a government decides that you need to have a fingerprint authentication or you need to have a government issued ID or file or you need to check a cell phone or you need to check whether somebody's on a no-fly list maybe, like for example in the US, those things can be done by the system. But as we said, we don't, we don't want to take a standpoint in that. We just tell our clients that don't over-regulate yourself, you know, just stick to the local laws and you'll be fine. But if we wouldn't do that and we'd say, oh, it's a free-for-all, uh, I don't think that we would be in business because we, that would take our machines off the market. So yes, in that respect, Bitcoin very free, but we are very much tied to local markets because this is where those machines are placed. So this is, uh, in that respect, uh, yeah, it's important to comply, even though we have our own opinion on that. <laughs> Can you speak to any other major problems or hurdles that Bitcoin most, must overcome? Uh, we've seen problems with hacking. Uh, currently, there's a centralization of mining miners. Um, eventually, that will, that will probably sort itself out. Uh, we see uh, exchanges that have gone bankrupt. I lost many, many coins in the Bitfinex disaster. Uh, uh, this, this will change in the future. What we're seeing now is the rise of decentralized exchanges, exchanges that, that basically they don't have a single point of failure anymore. Uh, this will allow for a uh, you know, greater greater governance and security, especially on those exchanges where people trade trade Bitcoins. So I think uh, when I started with Bitcoin in 2010, 
I saw many, many problems. I was a very pessimistic person. At first, I didn't thought Bitcoin could have any value whatsoever, this state number one. Then I thought the size of this blockchain will make it impossible to use Bitcoin on mobile wallets. Well, we've got mobile wallets now everywhere. They're more or less the standard. So every time we see this huge problem, the community always finds a way to, to, to tackle it, fix it, and get on with life. So this is how this is, this is what I find very exciting, is that everybody works together basically for a single common goal to make Bitcoin, make Bitcoin successful. Anything else you'd like to add about your company or the future of Bitcoin? Well, the future of Bitcoin, uh, I don't know, we're currently looking at alternative uh, implementation of uh, uh, implementing alternative coins. So we're not really fixed on Bitcoin itself you know, alone, okay, it says Bitcoin ATM, but it might as well be Ethereum ATM, Dash ATM, Monero ATM, or any other currency. We, uh, we have been supporting alternative currencies basically from the first, first model ATM. We will, be continue, we will continue to support that. I don't think Bitcoin will probably be always like the mother of all cryptocurrencies, but there's many, many more cryptocurrencies we'll be supporting. Um, that didn't answer your question, Josh. Sorry about that. I don't know, what was your question again, right? Well, I was asking about the future of Bitcoin, but uh, I bet it could be the future of cryptocurrencies in general. Yes, the future of Bitcoin. I think uh, once, the, um, once this whole transaction speed problem has been solved, Bitcoin will have really a flying start because by that time it will be co compatible with, uh, uh, speed-wise it will be compatible with the likes of Visa and MasterCard. And by that time, I think this industry will take us seriously. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. It's nice, uh, nice being here and it's nice uh, talking to you. Thank you very much. And best of luck with your business. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you. On a side note, Martin, I'm just wondering, why did you grow this impressive beard you have? <laughs> it was a bit of a bet, really. Um, I joined the company, we were fifth place. I said, oh, we'll not shave my beard until we are number one. So now we're like on third place. And I think by the time it's like this long, we'll be the number one Bitcoin ATM producer in the world. So then I'll, I'll cut off a bit. But for now, it's, uh, I have to keep it growing because it's part of the bet. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be looking out for you to shave that beard pretty uh, soon. I uh, will be shaving. It pretty, yeah, yeah I'll, be, I'll be shaving it pretty soon, yeah, because it's, uh, we, we expect to be uh, second uh, in the uh, global manufacturer list somewhere this summer and later this year probably number one. So by the time it's Christmas, I'll trim, have, to have it trimmed down. All right, <laughs> next year I'll see you clean shaven. Yeah, no, 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 not like that. No, 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 no. Always be a little bit of a beard. No, no, no clean shaven for me. Uh, what did I say? Grave before shave. That was, uh, I believe, was the impression. <laughs> All right, okay. grave before shave, you heard it. <laughs>